Hi, in today's post we're going to be talking about how you can help your child with ADD or ADHD and what you can do beyond the medications, what you can do in a natural way to get them going into a better stage or a better level of health. And the first point is that the nutrition counts. And what I mean by nutrition, it could be overall nutrition. You have to find out are there food sensitivities? Very big correlation between gluten and dairy and ADD, ADD and ADHD. If you are a child that's still eating those things and you haven't tried taking them off, then you need to do that. Second would be a good fish oil. And the fish oil, omega-3s are essential fatty acids. Your body has no capability of making them on their own. But when it comes to a child and a developing brain, you want to have DHA dominant fish oils. There's EPA and there's DHA. And in adults, EPA to DHA, it should be dominant towards EPA. These are just different types of omega-3 fatty acids. But in a child, a child with a developing brain, a brain that's in, in a little bit of trouble, you do need to have a DHA dominant substance. So find a doctor who understands those concepts. As far as the food sensitivities go, there's really only a few labs that do them appropriately. They're not the common allergy test, the scratch test on your skin, in my opinion, they're not going to find what you need to find in that. There are, there's a lab called Cyrex Labs. They do a great job in identifying immunoglobulins in the blood to the foods that they may be sensitive to. Now, you want to do it in a certain way. So find a doctor who understands it. Find a doctor who is using Cyrex Labs. In my opinion, they're the best. So food sensitivities, the omega-3 fatty acids, and then the processed foods. There are things that get added to foods that can irritate that nervous system. You know, a lot of the processed foods have deaminated gliadin in them, by the way, and that is a very big neuro, it's a neuro irritant. Um, there are other food additives that are known neuro irritants, like fruct uh, high fructose corn syrup and monosodium glutamate, which are natural flavorings, autolyzed yeast extract. These are additives that can irritate the system. So food counts, nutrition counts. The second thing that you can do is movement. You want to find outlets for that child that involve exercise. What has been found is that you want to put them in a, on a diet of electronics, an electronic diet. Their video games, all the things they're plugged into day to day, starts skewing the brain even further into the imbalance that they already have. And I'll get into the brain imbalances in the next item, the third item. But just know activity is, is driving a part of the brain that they need help in. And for most people that have, or most kids that have ADHD, ADD, it's boys. It's because their brains are already skewed towards that, that, in, that imbalance. So putting them on an electronic diet, limiting the amount of TV that they do, getting them involved in movement. Movement in the body drives information up to the back part of the brain. The back part of the brain drives the front part of the brain and that's where these attention problems are coming from. So you need to find a doctor who understands these functional neurological principles because the third component is a, a recognition of the fact, and this is what's been found in research, that there are imbalances that occur in the brain that need to be balanced out. Now the reasons why medications work, at least for temporary reasons is because they are driving the brain function up. The problem is if the child has an imbalance to begin with, all that medication is doing is making that brain work harder but still in that imbalanced state. From a functional neurological perspective, we can analyze the brain, identify the side that is imbalanced because there's a left side and a right side, and there are therapies that you can do to balance that out, brain-based therapies. So it could be spinal-driven care. Yes, spinal driven care, coming from a chiropractic physician, a, a chiropractic, uh, neurologically based chiropractor, so that you can drive that brain up into balance again. It could be visual stimulation, it could be auditory stimulation, it could be uh, timing and coordination exercises through different types of therapies like interactive metronome. There are all these different brain-based therapies that can drive the brain back into balance. Because once you start putting input into the nervous system and start firing a nerve pathway that's been weakened over time, you are going to make it stronger. 
The thing is, the reason why that food is going to be important is because you know what? The nerves, in order for them to fire correctly, in order to fire efficiently, in order for the nerve to actually do its work, it needs that fuel. It needs a proper uh, amount of fuel, blood sugar, oxygen going in so that it can make the protein, so it can make the adaptation to keep on getting better and better. Just like you're exercising a muscle to get stronger, if you're driving a pathway in the brain that's imbalanced, eventually over time, by monitoring it, you can get that, that pathway to balance out again. So those are the three things that you need. I'll have further posts on this topic because it's a very hot topic in today's society. Uh, and I hope that this information was helpful. Find a doctor who understands these principles. And I thank you for watching and make it a great day.